Welcome back, it's Heather the Painter here, and in Corel Painter 2021, we are going to finish this cute little munchkin from a cell phone capture. So here was the original image, and we're going to make just this fun, whimsical little painting. Now I'm going to use the Sargent Speckle Grainy Hard Drip Brush, and I've made some adjustments. So my opacity is at about 76, my strength is 60, my resat's 100, and my bleed is 100. This one, you can get some great looks by changing just the dab profile. And I am currently using Artist Canvas on here. And this is gonna replace the chalk oil pastel. So I'm gonna, tw I'm gonna switch between the chalk oil pastel and this one. I like how this one gives me a little bit more sketchy look. So I really like this edge, but I feel like it's just too, too defined. So adding just a hint of that green back into her arm will break up that texture just a hair. I love how the light hit her. It's so pretty. And then I want to play up this backlighting right here. I need to bring in her arm just a little bit. And then brighten that up. There we go. I'll also use this for the almost edge lighting of her face. You can see it's only picking up on the top weave of the paper texture we've got, and this needs to be fixed. I need a good blender there, so let's go find a blender. Now with this one, we had started with more of the larger masses in the background and kind of built up some interest and then slowly roughed in and worked our way into detail. And I worked in layers, so you can see, we started out with uh, making our background a little bit more gray. We have a nice grounded background. Then I worked in with some of the larger chunks and then I slowly bringed her back in. I like to work from background to foreground. It's just a matter of personal preference. Now I'm bringing in some little details and I want to, I'll go around, kind of make sure that I've caught the areas that need to be defined. Things that are more um, age appropriate. So if you look at things like, do you can see the jawline? It kind of shows where she is life-wise um, as far as teething goes. It'll tell a lot about her age. It'll show just, you know, her face, her personality. I, I always want to define the chin area and the jaw on children, especially. Um, that goes for adults too, but more than ever, especially with children, you don't want to let those go too loose. Um, and lost edges on a painting. That's really not the best place to do a lost edge. So I need to make sure that my lost edges are lost and my sharp edges are sharp um, as far as defining features on a face. Now, when you're painting something like a still life or a cityscape, you have a lot more freedom there because it's not really uh, defining the likeness of the person. So I'm gonna go around and make sure that I've got the right areas there. She's got a little defin uh, definition here. I want to make sure that I've captured that. I also want to make sure that I have not added any weight or made, you know, areas like elbows longer or arms longer. I just don't want to change features that make her her at this age. Uh, so we're going to go around and make sure that we um, have those things correct. And then we're also going to make sure that there are enough pops of color, pops of value that make it interesting because you don't need to necessarily paint what's there. It's always fun in these pieces to exaggerate what's there, provided that your values are being put in the correct places. And when I'm toggling on and off with my tracing paper, which on a Mac is command T on a PC, it's control T or over here, it's toggle tracing paper on the clone source palette. Boop boop. You can see my opacity slider is set to zero so I can see all of my image, my uh, clone source, reference source, or all of my painting. And when I click back and forth, I can really see that her face has gone a little bit flat and there's some opportunity 
along the backlighting side that I have touched on just lightly, but I want to bring forward a little bit more with some brighter colors. I think I could push those a little bit farther, and I also see a dark area right here that's making her eyes seem a little bit too sunken. So I want to exaggerate those tones a little bit more, and also make sure that these muddy areas in her arms don't look like they were mistakes. I want them to look like they were done on purpose and it doesn't look like, you know, readiness or mud or bruising, something that would be inappropriate to the story. So all of these little details, final touches, um, looking over your painting is really going to take it from well, that's nice too. Wow, this actually looks amazing. So take the time to look over and just kind of sweep over your piece. Uh, and then as well as I really do like to have a little bit more texture broken up and kind of scattered throughout the piece and just give it a little bit more atmosphere. I find it makes it interesting. I don't like things to be super smooth or all have the same texture. So I do want to make a point to go over and make sure that there are a varying degree of different textures in the piece. So here you can see I've got some bristly, I've got some broken, um, and I've got some uh, blurry bristly, some stark bristly, some stark broken, and in the background I've got some blurry broken. So there's a nice smattering of assorted textures which gives the piece I want to say personality and it gives it kind of a range of interest so somebody wants to look at it longer instead of everything being matchy matchy and you're like meh so after all of that talking let's go ahead and add a new layer and i'm going to come in onto her face um and let's see i believe one of the brushes we last used i liked the dry trail off and loaded dry bristle let's pick up some of those Let me try Dry Bristle Trail Off, which is in Thick Paint Compatible. I'm going to hit Reset. And I'm making test marks to see if I like those, and I think these might work. So I'm going to undo. Whoops. Bring back that layer. And on, off, on, off. And I've squished her nose up here, which I do not want to do. She's got the cutest nose. I'm going to sample D for dropper, B for brush, and just define that little nose. And this is using the dry bristle trail off. Just straight out of painter how it comes packaged. And that shadow area does come up a little bit further, so let me come up here. And the little dark area in her nostril does come out slightly farther. I came too far. There we go. Tiny little areas like this make a huge impact on keeping the likeness of the features of the person. So make sure you're constantly toggling your tracing paper. This is like looking at a live model if you were painting in real life. Now I can use light values over here because that's where the light is kissing her face and wrapping around the edge of that form. Just lightly, lightly touching. She's got that cute little upper lip. This is my four-year-old. I do believe she's used to having her portrait taken on a regular basis. There we go, the little divot in the lip there. Actually, there is no divot. Let me take that out. I don't want to add features that are not there, so let's separate that. Much better. Gives just enough of a little bit of an edge light. I do want to fix her lips because I've added um, an edge right here that is not her. That is not the shape of her lip. So let's go ahead and bring it back. Now you can do this a hundred different ways. You can bring in a cloner brush. You can use some round brushes or chalk brushes to clone. But I like so many reasons for this. Uh, for one thing, it really forces your eye and your brain to look at the original and make slight adjustments. 
comparing, you know, one point and going, oh, I need to move this over. I need to move this over. Let's move this over. Let's in relative to this point. And it's forcing your brain to think like a traditional artist. So instead of relying on tools to do the artwork for you, you are having to use your brain and make the decisions yourself. And it's just going to make you a better artist in the long run. So don't, don't deny yourself that part if you really want to become a better artist. Now that bottom lip, she's got a thicker bottom lip there. And I don't want to skimp out on that and make it look smaller because she's got a thick bottom lip. Now with this brush, I'm seeing a little bit of that ghosty hazing. So I need to find a uh, blender that will take care of that. And let's see what this does blending. So I'm gonna take reset to zero and bleed to 100 so it's nice and smooth. Let's see, that may not be doing it. I think that's the build of the brush. So I'm gonna go find a chalky brush. Let's get chalky blender up here. Take it to a high opacity. That's looking better. Now the shape of her lips a lot better. There's a little bit of light catching right here on the bottom of the cheek, just kind of showing the youth. Um, she's got those little puffy cheeks right now. I'm gonna add a little bit more, a number for reset. So let's go to 20. And I'm using the Chalky Blender under Thick Paint Compatible. And I wanna be very careful where these dark colors are coming in on her face so it doesn't change the shape or the forms of her face. I'm gonna check under shape make sure that this does not have any dab stencils applied. So it's not changing how this brush is breaking up. Well, this brush may not be the best here. We might change it. I'm just getting a little bit of texture over top. And that's coming from your paper selector, which I don't mind it, but it's not giving me a lot of control, which I really need right now. You know, actually, I actually kind of like that. So Chalky Blender with a high bleed, a lower reset, the bleed's just making it more smooth, and a paper texture sent, set to something a little bit rougher. Uh, this is on Artist Rough Paper. It gives you a broken edge. You can see it's a little bit more scattered. I'm gonna break this up back in here a little bit more. Just a hair. It's very, very subtle. And I'm going to fill this area in. Let's start a save, file, save as. Number 11, painter riff, uncompressed, check, check. I do wanna brighten up this area just a little bit. There we go. Getting just enough texture to keep it painterly, slightly broken, and I am very happy. I really like this brush, actually. Getting just enough of that broken beautifulness. I'm gonna take a smaller brush. Let's see what we can find here. Under thick paint, there's a brush called Dry Trail Off. Oh my goodness, I forgot how much I love this brush. Dry Trail Off. And my opacity is pretty high with this one. It's very sensitive to your pen. The grain is at 100, the bleed's at 15, the paint load is at 50. You'll notice that it creates a thick paint layer because it is a thick paint brush, which is fine. So I'm gonna use this to keep painting in some just breezy strands of hair. And it's also picking up a uh, canvas uh, paper, or I should say paper texture. Um, so it's kind of tying in all of our textures together very nicely. So I'm not having this solid 
scratchy, bristly mark. It's like if a smeary round and an artist chalk made a baby. So I really, really like this brush and I need to make sure that I save this. And it is very pressure sensitive. So if you find that it's fighting you, go ahead and sit, uh, set your brush calibration. Oh, there we go. Much more sensitive, a little bit too sensitive. So I'm just lightly, barely touching the screen. Or I should say the tablet here. I'm going to give her a really hot hair light right here. This is going to give her nice separation from the background. D for dropper. Push that color. And B for brush. Let me check her arm. I didn't mind bringing this up. I just don't want to change the shape of her arm. And I think I added some arm here. I pulled that out too far, so let me push that back in. And then I gotta be careful with the darker marks. Better. All right, so I am pretty happy with her. Constantly toggling in and out, zooming in and out, zooming in and out. Let me take care of this little, whoops. Let's go in closer. Tiny little mark right there. Pretty happy with that. So before and after. Now let's scatter a little bit of texture and see how we're gonna finish this out. Since there is a hair light that we've created coming up behind her, or we've exaggerated rather, we need to also carry that through with her dress. So I'm gonna take the color of her dress, lighten it, and I gotta be really light-handed. I'm actually gonna take my opacity down to about 30 and just bring out some little bits of highlights. Okay, I'm gonna take my opacity to 10%. Very cool. Now a brush I want to try, which might require me to flatten these, so I'm going to go ahead and do a file save as here. And I encourage you to work in layers because with all of the new layer, um, different types of layer types that we can now work with, it's just, it gives you so much more freedom to use these new brushes in 2021. Uh, you know, work in your layers, do a save first, and then flatten them down as needed. I am going to pick up another brush in the sergeant category, but I'm going to also, the thick paint layer, I might drop down that thick paint. Uh, so if we double click on it, we can take down the visible depth a little bit. This is a bit too raised for me, so I'm going to drop that down to, let's try 20%. And that makes me really happy. Let's stick to 20%. Okay. So let's find the sergeant brush. I believe it was thick pink compatible and it was thick sergeant. It's going to make another layer on top. Now with this one, I made some serious alterations here. I took my reset. Let's go to 20. Uh, bleed. We're going to put to zero and then opacity. We're going to do 10 and strength. We're going to do 10. Let's go strength to, I'm sorry, 20. And let's try reset at 10. Oh, not enough. Let's go to reset at 30. Kind of liking the skip motion to that. I'm gonna look at shape. And we can change the head or the dab profile at any time. I'm gonna try this one pixel edge. I'm kind of digging that. Now it picks up the flow map texture which this clouds will work really nicely with the uh, hydrangea behind her. So I'm going to use this to kind of scatter a little bit of that texture, almost the hydrangea bits behind her. So I'm sampling some color.
and it's kind of smearing and kind of adding color. I'm going to add a little bit more in my opacity. Let's go to 30. Get some greens in here. Fifty percent opacity. I like some of the purples that are happening up here. I'm going to gray them out just slightly so they don't overpower her. And I might change the brush dab on that. Let me go back to the round. That one I don't mind. Gives me a hint of hydrangea in the background. Pull in some blue. Kind of marry the two together. Gonna lighten this top light of value up here. I don't want too many hot values taking the eye off the page. And then with Sergeant Cloner, I'm gonna see if we can use, do a little bit of blending. I'm gonna take the strength down to 10%. That may have been a little bit too low. Let's go to 30%. That's not bad. And I'm gonna brush calibrate. This gives me like a little squeegee slash palette knife. Just a hair. Let me change the shape. Let's try the pencil profile. I'm pretty happy with that. It's more abstract, but I do tend to paint cell phone images more abstract and loosely. I like it. So let's go down to the original. So you can see we started there. We added some of her in with some cloning and building up. We built up freehand. More, more, and more. Let me go ahead and save. File, save as. Now when you're happy with it, and I'm pretty thrilled here, we can take all of our layers and say, you can say drop all and then do a file save as and I would name this final. Now on my final stage I would name this uh, a Photoshop extension because I do like to go in and out of other software for printing or to make any kind of tweaks but if you're doing printing from a Corel document or a Corel software you can save it as a RIF. So we'd hit save. I do know that it's not going to be a riff. That's fine. And we would have this final image. So I hope that's been helpful. And I hope you have a fantastic time in Corel Painter.